We're going to welcome YouTube audience back for what is CLG FC episode 125. Uh, we've got uh, Old Man Coonians next. That's a big one. That is a big one. We've got some big games coming up. Uh, including Old Man Coonians, obviously, but nonetheless. Um. <clears throat> Essentially. Here we are, two weeks until the next fixture, 13 days. Old Man Coonians, who are fourth, Shevington, who are sixth, Fleetwood Hesketh, who are second. That's what we've got. It's a great album. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, training schedule. Everything on point. Let's keep moving on. We're 12 days to go. <clears throat> you know what's funny? Um... I might, I'm about to uh, admit something, by the way, that, that might be considered sacrilege, but <clears throat> YouTube has it, because it's Halloween, like, you know how YouTube always has, like, whenever you're watching a YouTube video or whatever, you have YouTube open uh, to a video, there's, like, the little red YouTube, like, the, the play button icon, that YouTube icon, and then next to it, it's some design of something, right? And because it's... Uh, Halloween it says meet the analog horror community now I have no idea what that is and I'm not interested in finding out but what I will say is where I'm going with this is I actually listen to audio um, in at in mono uh, maybe not analog Analog made it remind me of mono, but I don't listen to stereo. These had, like, this music and whatnot, this is not in stereo sound. So, hugging the line as it would encourage them to cross the ball more often. I don't, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Jordan Doolin, a professional guy, we'll move on. We're just going to roll through. But, yeah, I don't like <clears throat> the whole, I love ASMR. It helps me insanely. Um, but I don't like the biannual audio and I don't like that. Like when, when you have all of the sound here and you have none of the sound here, I can't stand that. I, that, that actually, that triggers me. Um, like, like it, like it makes me, you know, so I, I listen to my audio in mono. I don't listen to it in stereo. So. And my iPhone is set up to do the same. I have my iPhone and and as um as mono. That way, when I put the earbuds in, they're mono. So <clears throat> I 
I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what it is. It just. It's I. I can't explain it. I just that's the way I like the audio. <clears throat> I was gonna look at the audio settings. <sighs> yeah, here it is. I don't know if it's gonna show you, but mono audio. That's what that says right there, and it's turned on. So. Same way with the with the laptop. Uh, both com well, both computers. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know about that one, the old one. But then again, I barely. Oh fuck! Sam Harris is injured for three weeks. Yeah, leave him. Phys leave it to the physio. So. The balance on that on the phone actually is also 0.15 to the left because I, I just don't I don't I think I don't hear as well out of that ear. So I put a little bit more audio shifted into that ear so that the volume is the same. So <clears throat> <clears throat> oh boy. That's a that's a stupid two minute suspension to take. She she won the ball. That's fine. All that's fine. So attackers take a shot. It's blocked by the keeper. Keeper makes a save. This is handball, remember. Attacker catches the rebound, but the ref says no free kick the other way because one foot is just touching the goal area. You're not allowed to be in the goal area as an attacker. So the ball has to be given to the keeper or any member of the opposing team and she runs away with it and then puts it on the ground and tries to roll it back. And I'm like the the, the ref's like no. <laughs> Two minutes. Yeah. So now they're playing uh, they're, they're leading by four with three and a half to play and they're playing a woman down for two minutes. <clears throat> uh, go for West Ham beat Arsenal. That's big. Um, what else? <coughs> um, that is it in terms of the news. We did want to check one thing, and that is go to staff and go to job center, and we're going to look at available jobs that are coming up. A lot of jobs have opened up. Portland is looking for a new head coach after their season ended. But uh, Skybet Championship, Skybet League One, Skybet League Two. <coughs> Southern League Premier Central, Ishman League, Northern Premier League. All the way down to Major League Soccer here. But again, we have the top 10 divisions. But uh, I wonder why it says a head coach. Because it should say, the game language is British English. So it that the head coach is an american term so i don't know why it i don't know why it does that but apparently it does but anyway still no international job opening up um <clears throat> i i did want to take a look really quickly at um here we go career republic and their schedules so under 23s are playing some internationals this year uh, actually during this international break actually today they're playing it versus Oman and then they have Asian Cup Group B under 23 Asian Cup Group B versus Vietnam Jordan Oman under 20s have some friendlies they have nothing for next year and the seniors <clears throat> have the East Asian Cup versus Japan China North Korea 
So, is this literally just between those four? Yeah, and the top two go to the... Oh, there's no knockout. It's literally just... It's literally just round robin between those three. In her hair... Uh, 14th of December is when it starts. That's Japan versus China. Okay. Netherlands have won. They have beaten uh, Hungary by a score of 30 to 26. Um. Good win for the Netherlands. They're playing good handball right now. <coughs> I'm trying to see what it's done to the standings. I think both were already qualified, though. Hungary was in third in their group. And I think the Netherlands were second. So now, as I'm waiting for this stuff to, to finish processing, we're, we're eight days away from the fixture. Netherlands are now on eight points. And Hungary on five, so they could probably finish uh, fourth if Angola win and there's points difference in there. But Netherlands, if France lose and the point difference, could go top. But I think France has to play Brazil, and Brazil's one and three. So <clears throat> anyway. That's the handball match done. Now to indoor volleyball. Netherlands and the Dominican Republic. I'm going to update my uh, command. Uh, this is who again? Uh, somebody versus Puerto Rico? Netherlands versus Puerto Rico. No, I'm sorry, versus Dominican Republic. <coughs> Let's see the uh, standings. Italy top in the group. Turkey are second. Netherlands have a single point. Dominican Republic don't have any. How's the stream, brother? Anders! Stream is good, man. We we, we won 5-1. Uh, we are in first place on goal difference and only on goal difference. Um, <clears throat> and we're playing fourth place. Old Man Kunian's next. So right now... It's us at the top on, I think, 18 points. Uh, or no, uh, we're on 21 points. Fleetwood has Catherine second. They are our only loss of the season. They're also on 21 points. Uh, Old Man Kunians and... Um, fuck, who's third? Uh, who's third? Uh, Newcastle Town? Something like that? Newport Town? They're third, and they have, um, they're both on 14. Old Mancunians and, uh, I think it's called Newcastle Town. I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> but, yeah, we're, we're playing, we played AFC Blackpool. Now we have fourth place Old Mancunians. Then we have sixth place Shevington, and we got the rematch versus Fleetwood Hesketh, which is like, that's going to be the big one because only the champion goes up. Only the champion gets promoted. So <clears throat> we need to um, we need to win the rematch against Fleetwood Hesketh because if we don't, then we might we might be stuck in this division. But other than that, uh, you know, that's that's where we're at. Streams have been good, man. How have you been, Anders? We're seven days away. <laughs> We're going to do leagues and focus when it comes up. CLGFC uh, uh, under-18's win is Graham and Presses. <coughs> Jamie Graham, the only goal of the game in the 54th minute. 
we are still a point back from FC Halifax Town now in the under 18s uh, league. We are six days to go until the match. Uh, that under 18s match, by the way, versus Tamworth under 18. So. <clears throat> But we are counting down the days. I was I had I admitted to something, Andrews. If you I just started playing Soccer Manager 25. It's a knockoff FM for the phone. Let me know how it is, because I would love to have a version of FM for the phone. And I don't want a Netflix account, so I can't play actual FM mobile. So. Um, <clears throat> I admitted to something that might be considered sacrilege, Anders. I don't listen all my audio on the computer and on the phone. I don't set in stereo sound. I set it in mono. I listen to all my audio in mono. I just, I don't know why, I just can't explain why, but I like, I like, you know, shiver and shriek when when I hear sound in one ear and not in the other. <clears throat> There's probably like some long medical name for something like that, you know? So, okay, Cookie's going to dribble more centrally. Jones is ready to start trying first-time shots. And we got our weekly staff meeting. <sighs> I don't want Joe, Joe Jones to dive into tackles. That's fine. Uh, we're going to move on. And we're going to move right on. Five days to go. It is November. <clears throat> we're down to four to go. Can't wait to get the campaign ads over. Uh, yeah, that's that's the shit with free-to-play games, you know. <clears throat> but um, what was I gonna say? Uh, shit, there was something I was gonna say, and I can't remember it now. Oh, one thing we are gonna do. I think we're gonna do it. I was thinking about it, but in the end, I might do it. And that is all the players on our side now are 21 to 22 years of age because they've been with the club since the start, right? It's a community save. So the community members are going to stay with the club, right? We might move their age back. We might peel their age back to 17, 18. At the end of the season. So everybody that's 18. Or everybody that's 22. At the end of the season will go to 18. And everybody that's 21 will go to 17. <clears throat> Just to kind of. Try and stretch their careers out. Because the, the eventual goal of the save. Is win the Premiership. Win the FA Cup. Win the Champions League. And I think. I think in order to do that, since we're in the 14th tier, we will need to extend their careers. And I think by doing by we would have to make them younger by doing that. So uh, I just think that's what we're going to decide to do. So I'll work on that next time I launch the game uh, prior to streaming. We'll probably move their ages back four years. Uh, it, we'll, we'll probably wait to the end of the season actually to do it. So anyway, <clears throat> um Leagues in Focus did pop up, so let's do that, shall we? We're going to do Leagues in Focus. Um, <clears throat> Inter-Miami, again, they 2 0 New England in the wild card game. Columbus then downed them 2-0 in the series. NYCFC down DC 2-0. Chicago down Atlanta 2-0. Montreal down Nashville 2-0. So Columbus versus NYCFC, Chicago versus Montreal. But they had to break. They had to take a break for the international break. So... That's why they haven't really uh, moved. Western Conference, um, 
Houston beat San Jose 2-0. LAFC beat Houston 2-0 in the series. Uh, then LA Galaxy beat Portland 2-0. Portland 2-0 in the series. Seattle beat St. Louis City 2-0 in the series. And Austin FC had to play a third game versus Real Salt Lake. Austin did win that game three. They move on to play Seattle. So there's your playoff matches. Those will get underway, I believe, this week. Yes, this weekend. Um, <clears throat> they'll be underway with the Eastern and Western Conference semifinals. And then we'll be into uh, the conference finals. Um, rest of the league's in focus. Aston Villa are still top of the Premiership by four points over Man City. Arsenal lost to West Ham. So Arsenal are now in third. West Ham have won three on the trot. That's put them in fourth. Man United fifth. Forrester sixth. Liverpool seventh. Newcastle eighth. Chelsea are up to ninth. Um, but really inconsistent. Three, one, and three over the over the last five. But it's been win, draw, win, loss, win. Uh, Spurs are tenth. Um, they're down to tenth. They've had inconsistency as well. Loss, win, loss, win, loss. Um, <clears throat> and at the foot of the table, Southampton are a point above the drop over Leeds United. Wolverhampton Wanderers are six, or I'm sorry, are two points adrift on six points in 19th. Sheffield Wednesday at the foot of the table, four points adrift. Skybet Championship, Watford lead the way along with Sunderland. Both clubs three points above. Uh, the playoff places of Coventry City, Ipswich Town, Sheffield United, and Birmingham City, Norwich City are a point on the outside looking in. At the foot of the table, Bolton Wanderers are a point above the drop uh, over Portsmouth, who are 22nd. Cardiff are also a point adrift in 23rd. Bristol City, two points adrift in 24th. Um, Skybet League 1, Stockport County lead the league by a point over Rochdale, who lead the playoff places by uh, as many points. Um, uh, so uh, that's over Exeter City, Preston North End, Wimbledon, and Reading. Blackpool and Darby County, and Stoke City, and Burton Albion down in 10th. They're all a point outside looking in. At the foot of the table, Wrexham are two points above the drop. Uh, and Shrewsbury are above the drop only on uh, Shrewsbury Town. They're only they're above the drop only on, by six goals on the goal difference. Um, and they've lost five straight. Uh, that's over Crawley Town. Uh, Cambridge United are a point adrift in 22nd. Wigan Athletic are four adrift in 23rd. Stevenage are four adrift at the foot of the table. Skybet League 2, you can't see it because my cam's here, but try to follow along. Wickham Wanderers lead the lead by a point over Bristol Rovers, who are two clear of Colchester United, uh, who themselves are three clear of the playoff places, which include Carlisle United, Bradford City, Doncaster Rovers, and Mansfield Town. Forest Green um, uh, Rovers are a point on the outside looking in at the foot of the table. Port Vale have climbed out of the drop. They are 2-1 and they are 2-2 and 1 in their last 5. They are above the the drop by a point over Torquay United who have dropped 3 straight. Barrow also a point uh, adrift at the foot of the table. Vanarama National League Sully Hill Moors have now taken the lead. Uh, of the Vanarama National by a single point over South Shields, South End United, Accrington Stanley, Oldham Athletic, Macclesfield, who have won five on the bounce now, including a big win over fellow promotion candidates Sutton, I'm sorry, Accrington Stanley, um, uh, and Yeovil City, so uh, Zig has got Macclesfield in sixth place. Um, Yeovil City is the last playoff uh, team right now. Gillingham are a point on the outside looking in at the foot of the table. Um, <coughs> Dorchester Town and Sutton United are six points above the drop over Boreham Wood. FC Halifax Town are seven adrift in 22nd. Maidenhead United are nine adrift in 23rd. Morecambe are 12 adrift at the foot of the table, and they've lost five straight. And finally, the level above us, level 13, Overston Rangers lead the West Lancashire League Division Two by seven points over Staveley United, who themselves are in the promotion, second promotion spot by four points over Barrow Wanderers Reserves. Um, at the foot of the table, Ambleside United, 
uh, I'm sorry, Unison Athletic, Ambleside United, and Gosforth are all a point above the drop over Wigton Harriers, Oldswater United, and Whitehaven Miners Social. Uh, Wigton Harriers are a point above the drop. Oldswater United are three adrift. I'm sorry, Wigton Harriers are a point in the drop. Oldswater United are three adrift. Whitehaven Miners Social are six adrift they have plenty to play though that's a 28 game season they've only played 11 we have an 18 game season and we have played eight so we're coming up on the halfway point the final game of the first half of the season is coming up for us <coughs> uh where is This is the fifth album from Led Zeppelin. I've been running through the albums. And we... Oh, Bishop's back. Good. Oh, good. He's automatically been subbed back in from Rollins. That's good. Love it. Jones is taken ill. He's suffering from food poisoning, so it's not he's not going to get anybody else sick, thankfully. He's out five to six days, though. He can play through a bit of food poisoning, right? The flu game. The flu game. Jones is about to have the, the infamous flu game. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe. When that, you never know. He's usually one of our go-to subs because he's so versatile, and he's very good in the air. That's the other thing. He is very good in the air for us. But <coughs> uh, scouting update. Uh, George Jones at Grayton United, which I requested. Apparently, he's only a B. But okay. Uh, recruitment focus finished. Darren Hitchinson and Gesem Bekiri, who's ones at Spurs, under 21s. He would probably. Oh my God, the transfer value is fucking $350,000. Hang on, 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 hang on. If there is something that I want fixed. In FM 25, it's this bullshit, okay? <clears throat> Current ability. A leading mid-Lancashire and District League Premier Division player. Potential ability. Potentially level 13 standard, which is one level above us. How in the world is a player whose potential ability is only an amateur level of football worth 350,000 pounds as a transfer fee? That's just not the. That's just not. That's just not realistic. This guy. Well, he's a goalkeeper. Darren Hitchin. I wonder what they say about Brat. By the way. <clears throat> Leading level thirteen, potentially level eleven standard. I mean, Brat is having a fucking monster season. I mean, he's just a monster player. So. Is there, like, career stats? His career stats, his career rating in 117 appearances is 7.13. It's pretty good. He's got 60 clean sheets in his 117 games. That's phenomenal. So. Anyway, we are a day to go until the fixture. So. <clears throat> I, always, I always look at other stuff, man. I always look at something in Football Manager, whether it's the international game, whether it's leagues in focus, I, the, 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 
footballing world always fascinates me and then you give me this world that's constantly evolving in a video game like football manager and i just it's like a sandbox to me man so i always want to look at what other stuff's going on in, in the in the save you know what i mean that i don't have control of even but old mancunians haven't won in three <coughs> Uh, we are 8-11 favorites, Old Mancunian 7-2, the draws 11-4. Let's get the press conference underway, shall we? With a first question from James Conway at 442. <clears throat> uh, he gives them something nobody else on the team can offer. Uh, Harris, I, I think he's still a little ways off, right? Yeah. Uh, I have no idea where that's come from. How do you describe your relationship with Lewis? We have a great relationship and I value it immensely. How important is good performance? It's a must-win match. After winning the title in preseason, uh, what do you think of your chances now? I would consider us title favorites. I don't know why we wouldn't be. We're top of the league right now. Many managers and pundits claim to be, I don't think you can put success down to the luck of staying injury free you've had a bit of a break we've had a chance to rest and refocus jack is immense uh i'm gonna pause the music since we're going into the match uh yes <coughs> okay that is basically the press conference done so now we're going to get into the game, shall we? Uh, the ads are starting in 11 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them now so that they don't run during the game. So for those on Twitch, we'll see you in three minutes. Um, but... Uh, a piece um, <clears throat> you could apply advice thank you Brad's actually coming along quite well Sh uh, Str stamina needs to needs needs an improvement he needs some stamina but determination's gone up positioning is getting close uh, yeah first touch and passing need to be better but you know This guy's not a bad keeper by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'm not making any staffing changes right now. And we're a day away, y'all. We should be ticking over shortly into match day. <clears throat> so, there is that. Also, we're in November. Remember... The very last of the leagues that we've removing, we're removing from this database to cut the database size, are coming are coming off the save in January. So we're really only, I think the 15th of January is the last one. So we're only we're less than two months away from that in the game. So you'll see that uh, as well. Hopefully that speeds up the process. Although just England and MLS and K League one and two. I might move K League to view only actually. I'm probably going to do that. Uh, <clears throat> so, and I might take Hong Kong off as well. Just take Hong Kong. The, the idea was to have Hong Kong and, and Korea as view only, and MLS and England 1 through 20 is playable. But I might go to just MLS and England 1 through 20 playable, Hong Kong and South Korea as view only. So, might do that. All right, match day, <clears throat> once again, this is episode 125 of CLG FC on YouTube. And <clears throat> we've got old man Coonians coming up. 
And then we go we go around the league a second time. So we do have the transfer window opening as well in about five weeks. Not for this division. This division, the transfer window, this division's technically amateur. So because it's an amateur division, the transfer window is open all the way through March, basically. So <clears throat> that is that is one thing to keep in mind is since this is an amateur division, the transfer window is open through March. But the domestic transfer window for the leagues above us who are going to try and snipe our players will be opening up in a month. And again, we will have those two leagues rolling off. I'm actually going to check that real quick once this comes back from processing. We do have Chorley under 18s as well in the under 18s league. So there is that. Um, that we're going to get news on, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we are, uh, <sighs> oh, I am back. Welcome back, Thomas. Uh, just in time for the second game, man. We're about to start the second game of the stream. After this game, we'll probably play one more since we'll go back to back. Uh, Stockport Georgians Reserves in Freckleton, which is a big rele relegation scrap, is the uh, marquee, uh, matchup uh i'm gonna move this to play view only and that should cut i mean 287,000 still i mean and look at all the leagues i've cut out remember i had every league added on here as playable at the start and every league is gone now <clears throat> and this rolls off january 1st and this rolls off january 15th and and that that is going to go to view only before they roll even roll off so Database is still 287,000. Uh, Boards expects us to win. Graham and Presses as Counterlogic and Under 18s win. Jordan Parsley in the opening minute for Chorley Under 18s, but then Jamie Graham in the 23rd and in the 38th, and Aiden Wardrop in the same minute uh, put us 3 1 up at the break. After the break, uh, Jamie Graham completed his hat trick in the 52nd. Jack Doyle pulled one back in the 59th and another one back in stoppage time at the end of the second half. But surely could find no further. And so. It's Sorry, it's 5-3 we win. FC Halifax Town did not win. They lost, so we go top of the under-18s as well. Uh, fitness tests, there they are. This is it, guys. Old Mancunians. I got to get my walkout music ready. We got to have our little walkout music ready. Here we go. <clears throat> and um, we're going to make Joe Jones um, play through his food poisoning. Everybody else is fit and ready. So let's get underway, shall we? <clears throat> the teams are warming up. And they have made two changes from their starting lineup from the previous match. I'm going to point the finger and say... Uh, There you go. And it didn't it didn't motivate Jack, so now he's just going to go out there absolutely hangry without eating a Snickers. Apparently. Many men wish death upon me. Let's go. Let's send the bay. It is first versus fourth. There is a seven point gap between the top two and the next two. And this is the match. That could either inch, increase or shrink part of that gap. We are underway with Old Man Cootians getting the ball first. <clears throat> That's just going to roll through all the way to Brot. <clears throat> We're underway with our second match of the night here. Frack with a throw in deep in the attacking third in the eighth minute. Spaps. Twinkle. That could be a good ball. Shima's back post. He doesn't jump for it. And Kemp's has put it out for a corner. I'm 
I'm sorry, did that say Fleetwood Hesketh or Norcross have taken the lead? I didn't even see that pop up. Here's a Cundy Coon with it. Cookies, back turn to goal. Cundy Coon should have shot through traffic. Keeper would have never saw it if it went all the way through. Um, and he's not. Now Parks is going to whip it in back post. Spaps could be there. Can he catch up to it? He's kept it in. Oh, and Miller has somehow put it out. I think Spaps is offside zone. The flag has gone up on the near side. What, what did you get for a snack, Thomas? I need to know. What you got for a snack? Here's Kelleher. Cross comes in. Meant for Reed. Headed up. Cookies heads it away. And that might go off the fl It's going to go out for a corner. Did she get Jaffa Cakes? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I love Jaffa Cakes. I absolutely love Jaffa Cakes. <clears throat> Here's Bailey Jones. You got a chicken wrap? Nice. Did you buy it from a store? Because if you did, like, what the hell's open at 2 in the morning? Offsides on Bailey Jones, by the way. Or, wait, actually, you're only four hours ahead. So if you bought it from a store, you would have gotten it at, like, 1, 1 15 in the morning. You made it yourself? Okay. I don't know how late things are open there. But, you know, things out here are only open at, like, 10 o'clock. <laughs> And in the city, they're open at like one one o'clock. <clears throat> but it's going to be punted clear. Twinkles come down with it. Snicky, myself, Spaps, Frack, Frack taking it, get, whips the cross. And Snicky could be there. Snicky, side netting. Yeah, there are a few shots that might be open, but fuck that. All right. I miss the the cheesesteak place, Del Rossi's, because pre-COVID, before everything got screwed up, and they haven't returned to the hours that they had pre-COVID. They, they have shortened, a little bit shortened hours. But pre-COVID, back in 2019, there was a place on 4th and Spring Garden in Philly, right? Oh, off the bar, wow. Now 4th Street runs... So it's like 4th and Spring Garden, right? You d and the reason I say that is because I had to drive north of Spring Garden to get out of the city, right? And I had to... Uh, and 4th went north, okay? 3rd Street was a one-way that went south, and 4th was a one-way that went north. So the place I used to commentate from was on 3rd and Poplar, right almost on the corner. So you would, I would roll up there and drive around for 20 minutes to an hour sometimes trying to find a place to park because that's how bad parking was. Still is. In North, ah, fuck. We got no help. Fleetwood has got to take the lead. Um, but I, I would eventually find a parking spot, right? And then on the way out, I would just go down third, take a, take a corner and go, you know, take a side street and then go up fourth. And on the way to Market Street, was uh, <clears throat> Spring Garden and Del Rossi's was there, right? And they used to be open at like three in the morning. So what would happen is the land center was open till two. So I used to stay there and commentate till about two in the morning. And then I would be hungry because I had either just come from work it was a, if it was a Friday night or uh, go on, Snicky. Go. Nah, I didn't finish. Or, you know, I just would be hungry because it's so late at night and I hadn't eaten in a while. And I used to stop and get a cheesesteak for the ride home. And I used to, uh, what do you call it? I'm about to admit, admit to something that maybe I shouldn't, but I used to have the cheesesteak on my lap and I would set the car to cruise control and I would just be like, <coughs> you know, on the cheesesteak, while uh, while the car was in cruise control on 95 because at 2.30 in the morning, who's driving? You know what I mean? So, and I would eat the cheesesteak on the way home. But uh, that was good. That was good. It was always excellent, too. Like, oh, fuck, that cheesesteak was good. I think Reed, is he not offsides? Yeah, he's offsides. I was like, was he not offsides by a mile? Uh, yeah, he's offsides. But, yeah, Del Rossi's, man good times. I used to pop over. Rustica was on second in Poplar. 
So I used to fucking walk walk a block down whenever I had a break, like an extended break between games. Like if I was doing VODs until 5, and then like ECL would start at like 6, I'd be like, I got an hour break. I'm going to pop over to Rustika and get some pizza, you know. Or the foodery with the home, like they would make a deli sandwich for you right then and there. Like slice the meat, they would put the meat there and they would just slice it for you. Put it in the sandwich, give it to you. I'm like, oh. Oh, all day. Here's Bailey Jones with a free kick for old. Oh, what a save, Brot. What a save, Brot. Thank you, Brot. We needed that save. Not good from us. Not good. Um, we have a .48 XG that we've limited them to literally no shots. That that free kick is actually going to have to be registered as a shot, but it's a it's like a .01 XG shot. We simply have to be better in front of goal and at least start hitting the target more often. So, here's looking at you, Snicky. Uh, <clears throat> but, Spaps might be the one that we replace, and if it is, it's going to be Joe Jones with his stomach flu in general. <laughs> so, he might be the first uh, replacement here going into... Looking forward into the second half. But it is nil-nil. Fleetwood has kept due lead currently versus East Manchester. So we're in second place by two points. And that's all. Oh, go on, Akoni Kuhn. Pick that ball up. It's too heavy a touch, Akoni Kuhn. You're never going to get that call. And, uh, well. They still didn't count that as a shot. I'm surprised. Myself back post. That's missing the mark. Boys, we need to win this game. <clears throat> Spaps has been booked. I think that's his night done. Joe Jones is coming on for Spaps a little earlier than I usually sub a player on. But, you know, I, he's on a 6.3 and he's been booked. I think it's time to swap the change. There's no 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 point in even telling him to ease off tackles for five minutes. Just make the change. Like, here's Joe Jones. Stomach flu and all. Myself. I think Frack is in an offside position coming back on sides. I think he's going to touch this ball and the ref's going to go all the way down the other end and he's going to put the flag up. So. <clears throat> 64th minute, Parks, Sheamus, Parks, Twinkle, Sheamus. Somebody, somebody, he's offsides. He's not offsides. He somehow was onsides. Now he's offsides. He's still onsides. I could have sworn he was offsides, but okay. Uh, Frank to take this corner here. 65th minute. We have to think about another change. It might be time for... Uh, I don't want to replace Snicky, but it might be time to think about replacing Snicky with Simon Roger McKendy. I mean, Snicky's got so much skill, way more than Mukendi does. But if they're not performing, they're not performing. Akuni Kun is like the worst rated player on the pitch, but I don't have an AMC to replace. Jones was the AMC. And I replaced him with another 6.3 with a booking. And that was Spaps. Why do we play like shit at home? Like, why? Go on, Sheamus. Go on, Sheamus. Come on. Jones. <clears throat> Jack Sheamus. <clears throat> Twinkle Akoni Kuhn. Back to Sheamus. That ball was practically behind him. I don't know how that ball didn't get nicked off you, Akoni Kuhn. That one did. I don't know how Sheamus came down with it. And then he makes, and then he takes the heaviest. Guys, focus, please, for the love of God, focus. Snicky, no. They don't even jump for that. I'm gonna give them about. I'm gonna give them about three to four more minutes. Here's Sheamus to take the corner. It's whipped in. It's headed away. 
Twinkle will come down with it. Twinkle. Almost lost it because nobody stayed in the passing lane. <coughs> should go over here. It should go. There's one over here. It should have gone wide. Oh, that's a good ball. First time as well. Oh, it's been cleared. Come on, Twinkle. What kid is that, by the way? This one? This is Lazarus. This is an old esports team that my friend played for. It's actually my friend's jersey. It's when she used to play for uh, Team Lazarus. So, Snicky is coming off for Simon Roger McKendy. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, it has her name and number on the back. I'll take it off in a minute. I had to ground myself on something because these fucking esports jerseys, you know, be all static. Come on, Jones. That is a corner. But my friend doesn't go by this name anymore. She she goes by a different player name now. However, um, this was her name in jersey at the time, or her name and number at the time. So it says 16 in there, which is the day of her birth. Cause she's she's a October 16th baby, so uh, yeah, it's one of my best friend's jerseys. So back from that's got to be 2016, 2017 ish era, maybe. Uh, maybe a little after that, maybe like 20 uh, 19. Her birthday just passed, and that birthday to her. Uh, thank you. Yeah, she's actually in Atlanta now. She was living in Korea for like two or three years, so. Akuni-kun, go on! Oh, come on, Akuni-kun. You've got to finish that chance, man. Jones has got to go back here to Frack. Frack's got to whip it in. Frack waited too long. Frack should have taken the... Should have whipped it in first time. Akuni-kun, you've got to fucking finish that ball, man. Uh, does Cookies play AMC? He does. So, I think Cookies... Go on, Twinkle! Oh, Twinkle's fired it over. So what I'm going to do is Cookies is going to come in here and then we're going to bring in Wellman for a Kony Kun. <clears throat> Since Wellman doesn't play AMC. Here's Frack. We need to, we need to, we need a goal, man. We need a goal. Here's Cookies. 81st minute. It's nil-nil. We need a goal. That is not going to fucking do it, boys. This is not good enough. <clears throat> like, uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure... Fleetwood are winning. So I need a uh, we need a goal, man. Bailey Jones with the cross, Frack with a big header. Fuck's sake, guys. We're gonna have to go very attacking here. Uh, we don't have another option. Uh, I think we go shoot on sight here. Uh, I think we do. I think we shoot on sight here. I just think we need a we need a goal. Here's Bailey Jones with a corner for Old Mancunians. Oh man, what a dangerous fucking corner that was. Jesus. <coughs> All right. How have they had another corner? What is going on here? They fired it. Uh, this should be match stats. We've had. 71% of the possession 
They've had literally not a single shot, yet we can't fucking win this game. And they, it, it looks like, by the looks of it, they have all the fucking highlights, too, even though they're, they're, they literally don't have any shots on goal. Parks, Twinkle, we've got to get fucking forward, man. Wellman, Cookies, Twinkle, Sheamus. Come on, boys. Don't fucking throw the title away. Parks, Twinkle. It'll still be there for us if we don't win this game, but we, we are going to have zero margin of error, essentially. Cookies. Go on, Cookies. Cookies whips it in. Jones is on the back post. That's pretty far. Jones has got to head it back down. Wellman! Oh, it's the side netting. Frack on the right. It still could be there for us. McKendy, I put you on for a reason. He doesn't get to it. Frack's got it back again. Stay on sides, McKendy, please. That's going for Sheamus. McKendy can't run it down. Bailey Jones has got it. Fuck. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Find a way. Just find a way. Come on, Sheamus, run at him, run at him, Sheamus, run at him. She got one in the middle. Yeah, good ball. Good find. Good move, Cookies. Go on, Cookies. Frack. Why'd you let that run out, man? You could have had a free fucking cross, man. They didn't press you down. Why? They didn't close you down. Why did you let that go out? Come on, boys. I'm going to get FM, darn I. I'm going to get fucking FM'd here, aren't I? I'm going to be so fucking angry if we get FM'd here. Come on, boys. He's off sides. He's off sides. The ball's a second too late, man. He's off sides. We've got 13 seconds. This has got nil-nil written all over it. Boot it forward. Give it to him. Parks, the ball's got to go over the top, man. We've got no time. Oh, fucking Christ on fucking mighty. They, they literally... They didn't have a single shot all game. And we had 70% of the possession. That's as brutal as... Almost... This is almost as... This is almost as bad as the loss to Fleetwood Hesketh. That is fucking outrageous. <clears throat> Throw the water bottle. <laughs> That's brutal. <clears throat> now, I think, did we get any help? Did East Manchester give us anything? Anything to maybe assist? We're going to see. I'm going to put the music back on. It's no sweet, sweet victory. <clears throat> it's it's a song called The Rain Song, and of course it is. Um... Because this game is raining on our parade. <clears throat> Let's see what we got, if anything, around the league. If any help around the league whatsoever. I think everybody played this weekend. Why is it process and taking so long? But. Man, that's frustrating. 
Did we get help? We did not. Aiken in the 77th. Jackson made it certain in the 88th. And Fleetwood Hesketh beat East Manchester to go two points top. Uh, Norcross's Porter in the 7th put them ahead. But relegation candidates Lytham Town came back. Beckford in the 30th. Blackwell in the 78th. And Lytham Town pick up a huge three points that pulls them out of the drop by a point. There is a four-team scrap at the bottom right now for relegation. <clears throat> at the top, we move into second place. Fleetwood Hesketh go top by two. We play Shevington next. We have lost and drawn at home. We've won every other game this season. But we've lost and drawn at home. And that that infuriates me. Uh, <clears throat> but it is what it is. We'll see if we have the post-match press conference. If we do, we'll do it, and then we'll roll out of here. We do have a post-match press conference. <sighs> two two chip reporters would first kick off with Charles Chan Carl Chandler, BBC Radio Manchester. Um. <clears throat> I'm choosing to remain optimistic about this. The uh more than a minor setback and there's a lot of football yet to be played which is true but that takes pressure off the team and i fucking want them to know that there's expectation on them um amongst the you haven't seen it fuck off uh literally matt matt k from manchester evening news came to the press conference and didn't ask a single question uh uh, Spaps locked in the dressing. <laughs> I yeah. Well, I mean, they were shit. <laughs> the finishing was shit. Anyway, that's episode 125. Big big match that we have to respond with. Shevington is up next. We'll see you in that one. Until then, thank you so much. If you're on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.